Hey guys, welcome back to Amanda's Favorites where I have new videos for you every Tuesday. Today's video is gonna be a review of the content planner. I saw this planner out last year and decided to give it a wait until this year's came out. And when this year's came out, I decided I would get it. I was not sent this planner to review. I bought it in the pre-sale and I don't do that much anymore because my job, perks of my job is I get sent planners. I did send an email trying to get a content planner to review and Kat said she wasn't giving them out for review. I went ahead and bought it in the pre-launch. I wanted to give it a try enough for my content that I decided to go ahead and shell out the money and give it a try. I also wanted to be able to do a good review on it. I felt like like there was a lot of hype around it. There are not a lot of YouTube reviews out about it. So let's jump in. This is a very unique planner made just for content. So it could be blog content, YouTube content, Instagram content, you know, Facebook, any of the other social networks, but it is specifically made for content and it only has monthly layouts in it. This color, the powder blue is sold out right now. I just checked online before I made this video, but she does have another color. It is the sunshine yellow and it comes with an emerald C box and it is $59.99. When I got it in the pre-sale, it was a little bit cheaper, I believe. I think about $10 cheaper. I cannot remember my pre-sale price. But if you are interested, I think her lowest price of the year is always in her pre-sale. So I would look out for that in the last quarter of this year. It is an undated planner though. I do like that fact because I'm not using it right now. I did try it out for a couple weeks and I will show you that. I'm not using it right now, but I like that it's undated so I can save it. If I ever wanna pull it out again and try it for content, then I already have it. Her box Boxes are really nice, sturdy. You can definitely store your content planner in here after use. Mine came with a diamond pen. I could not find that right now to pull out. I'm not sure if that was just a pre-sale special. So like a gold pen with a diamond on the end. It came with these two little camera paper clips and it was wrapped in this tissue paper and a little card from Kat. That is how it came boxed up. And I got it several months ago, like I said, because I got it in the pre-sale. Before we jump into the content planner, I I will just show you how I do my content. So it will make more sense to you why this didn't work for me for specifically my brain. My content planning is mostly for Instagram. YouTube is on another clipboard and I do stick my YouTube videos in here in red, but for the main YouTube planning, I stay on this clipboard system that I've been on for the past couple years since I started my channel. And I do not see myself changing this. I stick everything on with a sticky note. I have a system here and then I can move around my videos really easily. So it is just blank monthly calendars and this clipboard sits on an easel on my office desk and ideas and blank stickies go back here. This has worked for me for years and I'm not changing my YouTube system. My YouTube videos go in here just so I can know what's going on for posting. This layout works really well for me for content planning. I have used this layout for a couple years where you have a week on one side horizontal and then list room. I've used the Hobonichi weeks. That was, I used it for several months probably like close to six months, I think, but it became a bit small for me. And I used a golden coil layout that was like this too, but that was a bit big for me. So it was kind of like the Goldilocks syndrome. And also I wanted something without a coil in the middle. So this could sit up on an easel on my desk also. I always need it out and open. And if it's on an easel, I can just add a glance every day, see what's going on. I just put what I need to film that week or take pictures of. I put what I've already done film or pictures of, so it can go up on Instagram. And then I, as the week goes on, I kind of put into the week where I think things are going to go on what day, but they don't always go up that day. And then I end up moving them around. I don't ever post on Sundays. So it's kind of nice that Sundays at the bottom and grayed out. So I don't use that box at all. Here's how kind of my past few weeks of planning has looked. But like I said, I've been in this layout before this one. I was in the Hobonichi and the Golden Coil. So this is just the layout that works for me. I love to be able to have a list of what I need to film or take pictures of for the week, for IGTV, for IG pics, what I have just sitting done as far as film and pictures, and then where I can fit it in. This is a Muji planner I got off Amazon. I also just write my videos in here on the monthly layouts up front. I copy them over from the clipboard, but I don't do that too far ahead since I move stuff around so much. So as you can see, March is not even booked in yet, although it is on my clipboard 
because I might need to move videos and I didn't want to have to do sticky notes for in here too. So just once the videos are kind of set in stone, once we come up to that month, then I'll write the videos in here. So if I'm not near my clipboard, or I just want to have record of it in here for the year. As you can tell, I wrote this on too soon and I had to scratch it all out. So that's just kind of how my content planning works. And I'm using this Muji planner off Amazon. If it is still available on Amazon, I will link it down below in the description. I do have an affiliate link down in the description for this content planner. And I am so grateful whenever you use my affiliate links to purchase, that's what helps keep my channel going. So thank you so much. Let's jump right in. This is a hard cover and here are the measurements on this. I just measured it with a ruler because I didn't see the measurements up on her site. It's eight and a half by 11 pages and the cover is 8.75 by 11.5. So basically think of, you know, a piece of paper, but it is done in landscape design. So your planner, you do need a pretty big space to lay out your planner. Since this planner is undated, it comes with stickers. So you don't even have to write in your months here. I'm going to go to the month that I used. I only tried it out for about two weeks, to be honest, because it was just so different from how I had been planning. There just wasn't enough room on here for me. You guys saw how I like to have my list for the week. Well, this was the space now that I have my room for my list for the week. For right now, for the way I plan, wasn't working for me. But I know many people who use this and love it. I've had people comment on my posts on Instagram when I first got it, and I've seen people through Instagram using it and loving it. So I know it works for many people. It's not the way that my brain works for my content planning right now. Your sticker, though, for the month goes right here. I do like that it comes with the dated stickers. It just gives a little bit more classy look. I do like the dated stickers since it's undated. You get one per month. These stickers, I believe, are made to be tabs. That's the only thing that makes sense to me. You fold them over and that would be your monthly tabs, which is nice to have too. Then you have just important to-do list, launch, and day off. Honestly, you guys know me. I don't use many stickers in planning and I probably wouldn't use most of these other stickers, but I do appreciate the dated stickers up here. You get a whole bunch of icon stickers on your monthly days. She's thinking that you could use these little stickers to go on each line so they're made to fit on your line so that you can put whether it's a blog post, whether it's a YouTube video, whether it's from Pinterest or Facebook or you're doing a live or Instagram. So you can put a sticker of where you're posting. But since my whole planner really is just one video a week on YouTube and then the rest of it is Instagram, I probably wouldn't pull out the stickers to use them. Although I think it's a nice extra to come with your planner. For me, I would have rather taken money off the price of the planner and just had these available for sale separately since I'm not someone who would use them. You guys, you get six pages of these icon stickers. So every page is the same. The same stickers are repeated, but you have six pages. So it's a lot. They're meant to last you for the entire year. So you're stocked up on those. You've kind of seen the monthly layout, which we're going to go over more extensively. Let's start at the front. It comes with a pocket. The pocket is rather thin and it comes out really far. I think it's meant to stick all the sticker sheets in. It comes out very far. All your sticker sheets do fit in there and you could store them all in your planner and keep it in there. But it's not a super tight pocket. It's not super heavy duty right there, that material. I mean, I feel like if I wanted to, I could rip it off, but I'm not gonna do that. You have your nameplate page, and then you go into how to use the content planner from Kat, who is the creator of the content planner. Goals in writing are dreams with deadlines. This information is really interesting and really helpful for a lot of people, I feel like. Every month, she puts what would be on your radar for the next month. For instance, in January, you would be thinking of Valentine's Day the next month, Easter in April, and spring break in March and April. In February, you would be thinking spring is coming, Earth Day is in April, and summer, start making ideas and collabs. In March, you would be doing Easter next month, review finances, and taxes due next month. I find this very helpful to have this on the radar. I think it's a great thing she's come up with. Then she has some monthly theme ideas. I also think this is a great thing. This is a unique thing and helpful and functional to have in a content planner. It's giving you theme ideas for the month to do your blog posts or your videos about. For instance, just in February, we're now, it says love and winter, Valentine's and Galentine's, Super Bowl, Mardi Gras, thoughtful gifts, indoor activities, and Black History Month. Every month, she gives you those monthly theme ideas. Then you have 2020 US holidays and March marketing ideas. Here you go for even the end of 2019 because that's when the pre-sales came out, the end of 2019 and starting into 2020, every month you have your US holidays and marketing dates. 
So she has things like National Peanut Butter Day, National Pie Day, but also the U.S. holidays like Martin Luther King Jr. Day. So it's all in here mapped out for you through the end of the year and then even a space to list out additional holidays and dates that you want to remember. So if you have some extras specific to the content that you do, I think these pages are very helpful in the beginning. Then you have 2020 holidays for Canada, UK, Australia, and New Zealand all on here divided out by country. If you need holidays for those other countries, they are on here too. Then you have 2020 at a glance. I love this spread. I think it is really helpful. At one point she offered this at as a free printable on her site, or I believe it came in one of her emails and I printed it out and it is on the back of my YouTube clipboard because I think it is really helpful for you to write in. I was writing in the big launch dates that happened throughout the year and it's divided by quarter, quarter one, quarter two, three, and four. I think that 2020 at a glance done this way in quarters for a content planner is good. All right, now we're going into what you get for every month. You have a place for my dreams. You have an empty page for that month. You have a little quote, just motivation there. This is where you can list out your ideas and brainstorming for the month. This is like your monthly list. You can use it however you wish to. It could be like post ideas, or it could just be lists of things you need to do for whatever you're running, if you're running a blog or a YouTube channel. So you have list room, you have a big blank space for more lists or mind mapping, whatever creative you wanna use that for. Then you have a place for four monthly goals, something that's on your radar that month, hashtags that you wanna use that month, hit list and collabs for that month. And then she gives you tasks and tips down here every month. It's different. It says this month, create a new hashtag group, gather together small to medium sized hashtags, 20,000 to 400,000 posts that are all related to your brand or services, group together 30 hashtags and put them into a notes on your phone, ready to copy and paste into Instagram. I think those are helpful to give you like a task to do every month to help you up your game. And yes, I keep my hashtags all grouped by company on my phone under notes. It's stored in the iCloud so I can type it in on my computer also and then but I can access it from my phone. Keeping your hashtags in notes is a great idea. Here is the one month that I used a little bit. It is a mess because I didn't really know how I was going to use it. I started with a friction pin which I don't normally use but I thought if I have this limited space for every day then I'm not going to be able to mark things out and I'm going to need to erase. So I started by using a friction pin. I wasn't really sure how what I was going to use color wise for color coding and here is my pen test. On her site, she does not have listed the paperweight. At least I couldn't find it, I think. And I thought I've heard that it's 120 GSM and it feels around there to me. It might only be 100 GSM, but it is not thin paper by any means. So it feels pretty substantial. Now, does it feel like luxurious paper to me? No, it doesn't have much tooth. It's just a pretty smooth paper, but it handles pen well. It is not thin like a Target planner paper. Here are all my pens that I used, including fountain pen, and then this is just all my normal writing. And if you look on this side, there is absolutely no bleed through, not even on the fountain pen, the paper mate flares. Your page looks clean and crisp and ready to use. There's no ghosting issues. That leads me to think this is more probably 120 GSM. As I used it, I was just kind of putting my ideas for the week here. And then of course I would put what I plan to do on Instagram for the day there. Another one of the problems I had just besides being too small for the day, you guys saw how I used my weekly. It's just completely different from kind of how I've been doing it for years. But I do like a lot about this planner. That's why I'm glad it's undated. You never know when I might want to pick it up again and give it a try down the road. My biggest conundrum is probably that it has this landscape big format and I can't leave it completely open even on the cabinet behind my desk because I just don't have the room to spare for this big of a space. So I can't leave it completely open and see my whole month at once. So I'm like, okay, that's okay. I can just look at the part of the week that I'm on, but even just the part of the week I'm on, I mean, it's bigger than a seven by nine planner. You have to be okay with having an eight and a half by 11 space to be able to lay this on and only seeing half your month at once. And when you wanna work on your whole month, you know, you need to have it open big to see your whole month. That was an issue for me. I do love how it has a small coil how it is a small, lightweight planner, and I do love all those pages in the front. I find them very helpful. I also love just having this place to plan your month and monthly goals and what's on your radar. I think this page is very helpful. Then you have a My Business Growth section here, which I also think is very helpful. I actually really like this section. I don't need all the boxes in it. I keep track of this stuff in a Leuchtturm notebook I have since I started my channel. I think it's nice to see it right here with your month. 
month. It has an Instagram, a Pinterest, a YouTube, a Facebook, a money. I'm guessing that it's your total for the month and an email for email subscribers, I'm guessing, for to start your month, your numbers, end your month, your numbers, and did you gain or lose there? This month's theme, this month I will, and this month I won't. And then you have your weekly goals. So a box for each week, and at the end of each week, my wins. So a little bit smaller box. I love that, that at the end of the week, you're thinking about your wins. It is a Monday start for your week. Now, even though it came with a lot of dating stickers, it did not come with stickers to date your month. So you do have to date your month in here. But let's look into a blank month here just so you can see how it looks without my handwriting all over it. One thing is I don't mind that being grayed out lines here. I mean, I kind of like the separation. I definitely like lines to write on for sure. But I would just want it to be a much, much lighter gray just for my eyes personally. And I would like this to be a little bit lighter too. That's just me personally. Since I use this planner and this is something that I've considered using, I might want to pick up again in the future. These are just my personal preferences. Every month you have five weeks for your month. You have a Monday start. So your weekend is grouped together. And here's just how the page looks when it's clean with nothing on it. Then in between every month, you have that how I plan to succeed page and your lists and your monthly goals and your tasks and tips. And that's how this flows for you have actually 15 months. This is a 15 month planner, not just 12 months. Because when she releases about pre-sale time, I think that was in October. She wanted to give you some extra months. So if you want to start it at the end of the year when it first releases, that you don't have to wait until that next year. You get a 15 month undated planner here. When you get to the end, you have some graph grid pages. My plan to take over the world. (laughs) I like that. And I like the cursive there. I like her fonts, her cursive fonts throughout here are really nice. You have four graph grid pages and this one says, let my imagination run wild. Then that's the end. That is end of your content planner. There's no pocket at the back. Your pocket is at the front. Of course, you could stick in like an Erin Condren pocket back here if you wanted one. It has the gold corners to protect your corners. It's a beautiful book. Oh, in the back. I, I do like the back. Plan it, post it, profit. That's her company like motto. I think she's done a beautiful job on the cover and on the box, on all the packaging. It certainly is beautiful. I would love to hear your thoughts down below on this content planner. I would love to hear if you've tried it, if you want to try it, if you do content planning and you use a different planner or just a notebook, I would love to hear what you use and how you do your content planning. Please chime in down below in the comments. We can all learn from each other. Thanks for watching guys. Happy planning and we'll see you next time. Bye-bye.